you know, a lot of people ask me, like, just tell me what test to take. Right. right. And I always say it's, it's so dependent on what you've got going on. And when it comes to blood work, I happen to love getting lots of data on myself. So I'll, I'll request like all this stuff and then I'll get my bills. I'm like, wow, $400 again, $400 again. <laughs> all right. Maybe I shouldn't ask for the same thing unless I'm willing to address it. Exactly. So I'm like, I know my D is low. I know my this is low. <laughs> like, right. Let's not order everything because it does add up. And, and these things, though, when you do get the data are so um, invaluable. Like you get such powerful insight into yourself. Right. And, and it's important to check those nutrients and micronutrients and the toxins because they affect the cell signaling. And I can't get you better if I don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the Fusionary Health Podcast. I'm Dr. Shivani Gupta, and this is the podcast dedicating to recalibrating your health every day. My goal is to help you wake up each day energized by addressing root causes and giving you new approaches to preventive health. The more we know about integrative health, the more empowered we are in building the vibrant health we want. Welcome to the Fusionary Health Podcast. I am so excited for our special guest today, Elizabeth Tringali. So Elizabeth, I have heard wonderful things about your practice. It sounds like this oasis of health and wellness and well-being right here in West Palm Beach. So will you share what led you to create this and your background that led you into functional medicine? Oh, I would be... I would love to. I'm, I'm honored to be here, Dr. Gupta. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so when I was a little kid, I had um, kidney issues. And so I had to have surgery at age two. And I had IV antibiotics. And that really destroyed my microbiome. So that led me to have asthma, chronic hives, allergies, and even childhood obesity. So when I went to college, I wanted to study nutrition. Sure and see if I could reverse some of these issues because every doctor I would see, including my pediatrician, they would just say, eat less, take some Claritin or some allergy medicines, and your chronic fatigue is just due to allergies. And I'm like, you know, I don't think that my stomach issues, my, my hives, my rashes are just from some you know, basic dust mite. You know, sure. There's something more internal going on. So in nutrition, I learned all about the microbiome, and this is in the 90s, which wow. was pretty impressive, University of Florida. Um, and then I graduated and I started doing some research, um, actually in my undergrad, I was doing research on folic acid with the Women's Health Initiative. Okay. And then that led me down the rabbit hole of getting more into nutrition. And so I wanted to become, I wanted to do something in medicine. So I got right into PA school. So that's a two year um, master's program, University of Florida College of Medicine. And we studied typical allopathic medicine, which don't get me wrong, you need that. You know, that's excellent. I learned all about pathology and the medications to treat the diseases. But I got away from my roots of nutrition and trying to treat the body. So as I was still working on myself, I found I had a candida issue, systemic, and that was really big in the 90s. Um, a lot of my friends that grew up from the same age group were told the same thing. So I went on a candida cleanse. I lost a bunch of weight. I felt better. My asthma went away. My allergies went away. Wow. I lost weight. And when I got out of school, I started practicing this in PA school. I started practicing just some basic natural methods and diet with the allopathic model. And it just led me to go again into this rabbit hole of holistic medicine. And I did a fellowship with the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, which is regenerative medicine. And then I just, I opened up my own clinic and started practicing on my own. Amazing. Yeah. What a beautiful story. So you took your hardship and what you grew up struggling with, studied it in depth, found a way to transform it, went into, and studied both models, right? which right. is really beautiful because then you can fuse the best of both models. So in your view, what is what sets functional medicine apart from conventional medicine? Well, I mean, functional medicine is conventional. A lot of people don't understand that. You know, we still do study pathology and want to treat the disease, but we try to get to the root cause. So we try to find out what's wrong. So for me, it was my microbiome. You know, it was, besides having all those antibiotics, I was a C-section baby. So, you know, I didn't really have a great chance from the start having a good immune system, right? So sure. in functional medicine, we go back to the gut and we try to figure out what happened that's expressing certain genes to cause things like even like a headache, you know, what's causing your migraine. So we don't just treat it with a prescription medication. We treat it with diet and lifestyle, exercise and um, different herbs, of course. Sure. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, the difference. 
Yeah, and I think people do misunderstand that. They assume functional means something new or something holistic or something different, when it's really the evidence-based aspects of natural alternative complementary medicine services or tools used on top of conventional medicine. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and I'm so glad you brought that up. It is evidence-based. You know, so my fellowship um, was with the University of South Florida and Georgetown University, and everything we learned was we, we got our continued medical education credits, which are for our license, so for an MD, a DO, or a PA, or an NP. So we got credits for the work. Everything was evidence-based. We learned the research, and then we would learn, you know, turmeric, you know, how does it work for inflammation versus taking Celebrex or an NSAID or something like that for inflammation, which does have nasty side effects, but, you know, the only side effect of turmeric, really, if you take too much, maybe you'll bruise. You know? Sure. <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah, it'll thin your blood. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Which is probably a good thing. Yeah. You know? and nowadays, with mm -hmm. everyone wanting nitric oxide and everything, I, I laugh because I'm like, well, turmeric can do that. Right. You know, right. it has that potentiality. Yes. So in your practice, what are some of those root causes that you see the most? Because when I look around, I see people really struggling with their health. So what do you see most commonly? You know, a lot of the root causes I'm seeing in Florida, at least South Florida, um, is mold. Mm -hmm. So environmental issues. And sure. that's something in the regular paradigm of allopathic medicine. We do not learn anything about environmental. So in Florida, there's a lot of mold. There's a lot of heavy metals. Um, arsenic from the pesticides, lead from the pesticides, mercury. So these are endocrine and hormone disruptors. They affect the cell signaling. So people have chronic fatigue, or if they have fungal issues, they'll have psoriasis or eczema or lichen planus. So all these skin manifestations, which we in regular medicine would just give you a steroid or some sort of anti-inflammatory, or again, an antihistamine of some sure. sort, um, and some cream. But when you get to the gut, you find all these fungal and bacterial infections or They'll have something in the air they're breathing. Air quality, really, in this in this world, is yeah. not discussed enough. True. You know, I think I have a little app on my Amazon or my Echo at home, and it, all of a sudden it'll just tell us like your air quality is poor. <laughs> you know, really, out of the blue, yeah. and I'm like, what happened? Did the wind change? I don't know what's going on. But you know, I'm very aware of mold because we did have mold. It was another one of my lovely journeys that taught me so much. But sure. um, we had mold in our in a condo I lived in and in our house, and it really did impact my health. So I'm very aware of that with my patients. Probably a little skewed, sure. but it seems like. I don't know, more than half my practice, I'm finding mold toxicity as a root cause. And that wow. can cause hair loss, migraines, even long COVID. They're finding, there's a journal, I think it's in the Lancet, that some of the long haul COVID cases where people just can't get better, they've linked it with aspergillosis. Wow. Crazy, right? It's crazy. And sometimes people just don't realize where the problem's coming from and they're trying so hard to fix it. And when you go to a practitioner like you, you can dive into how, why, where is it coming from? So what is the process you take your patients through to kind of unearth these root causes? So we have a very long intake, which people don't really love sometimes because sure. it takes 30 minutes. But at the end of it, they're like, you know, this really made me more aware of what I'm drinking or did I have an old uh, root canal 10 years ago that possibly is making me toxic, you know? Right. So it's this very long, drawn out yeah. <laughs> you know, but history, you need to. history that I do need. So, you know, it takes them a long time. But when I read it, it gives me like, you know, good... 10 minutes of introduction that I know that I can make a big difference in their life because of where they were born. If were they born in New York City, were they born in Pennsylvania near all the steel mills? So that's number one is your history. Sure. Uh, number two, I always look at the gut. So I'd like to do different stool tests for the gut biome. Sure. I do food allergies to see like what are they putting in that's inflammatory because just like Hippocrates said, food is your medicine. Right. And that's another thing, again, we miss in allopathic. Most physicians, not all of course, but um, most PAs and doctors and NPs, we don't have the time in a 10 minute interview with a patient that comes in sure. with acne to ask them what their diet is. We just say, okay, here's your prescription for your antibiotic and see you later. But sure. um, with functional medicine, I do have that hour. So I have the opportunity just to go over their lifestyle, their diet, their environment, look at their gut, look at what they're eating, look at what they're breathing. Mm -hmm. And um, then it's precision medicine based on the results of their lab tests. Sure. So people always ask me like, do you just have a basic blanket lab you know, formally right. give everyone, no, you know, it takes me a while to put that lab together because we do take insurance for the blood test. So I don't want to just order as many tests as possible. I want sure. it to be targeted at what your intake said, right? right. So we do blood, we do stool. Um, I'll do some hair analysis sometimes, uh, urine tests for heavy metals and toxins. And that's pretty much how I do my workup. Awesome. 
you know, a lot of people ask me, like, just tell me what test to take. Right, right. And I always say it's it's so dependent on what you've got going on. And when it comes to blood work, I happen to love getting lots of data on myself. So I'll, I'll request like all this stuff and then I'll get my bills. I'm like, wow, $400 again, $400 again. <laughs> all right. Maybe I shouldn't ask for the same thing unless I'm willing to address it. Exactly. I'm like, I know my D is low. I know my this is low. <laughs> like, right. Let's not order everything because it does add up. And, and these things, though, when you do get the data are so um, invaluable, like you get such powerful insight into yourself. Right. And, and it's important to check those nutrients and micronutrients and the toxins because they affect the cell signaling. And I can't get you better if I don't know what you're missing. Correct. Yeah. So in your practice, have you had like a challenging case that you solved where you were like, yes, I want <laughs> at it? Because I, I have some of those sometimes. I recently had someone who listens to this podcast who was battling with infertility mm. and she had gone through six rounds of IVF and she was on her seventh. Oh, geez. She reached out to me and I said, yep, uh, you know, I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner. I'm happy to help you. And I partnered with functional medicine. So I love the functional medicine approach of like all the beautiful data testing and gathering that information. And so the practitioner came up with an answer. I had all my supports with turmeric and herbs and spices and teas. And now she's pregnant. Oh, wonderful. And, That's and a I'm blessing. Like, I, I told her, I said, I feel like I'm on the journey. Like keep yes. me, uh, keep me apprised of the milestones. You know, and there's so many times that people do not even come to me for pregnancy or for fertility. I'll see them in their forties or late thirties. This has happened three times I can think of right now. Um, I'm just detoxing them, cleaning them up, optimizing their hormones. And then they get pregnant. Sure. <laughs> and yeah. so I had this one lady, she's a veterinarian. So she called me up. She's like, you know, I had infertility. I, we weren't using protection. We, you know, we had to pay for in vitro to have our baby. I wasn't expecting. Now I'm pregnant. I want you to pay for the college education. And she was laughing. <laughs> but I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But yeah, you know, if you clean up the receptor and change the diet and just add a few herbs and supplements, you can help fertility. Right now with fertility, I'm seeing it's a lot of um, plastics, right? Plastics, pesticides, sure. even EMFs. I'm sure. And the quality of food, it's really difficult to eat healthy. So I feel like this younger generation of young adults, they don't have the same foundational nutrition that we had. And we don't have what our parents had Correct. by any means. You know, we, my parents had a garden growing up, so we don't have that. Well, you can grow your own garden, but. Yeah, no, I, I'm don't. very worried about the future yeah. generations. Like I have an elementary and middle school child. And since they were born, I reduced as much of the endocrine disruption that I could. I have water systems. I have air Ugh. filtration. I do everything. But now once you hit these preteen teen years, you lose so much control. Right. And I just feel like telling them, look, I invested in your future fertility. <laughs> you have no idea what that's going to cost you in the future if you don't continue to manage and honor it. And how do they take that when you say that? They don't listen to no, me at all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, take your turmeric. They're like, mommy, turmeric doesn't work. I'm like, oh, it works. <laughs> I have 10,000 people who say my stuff works, but you're not going to listen. Because <laughs> so. you're the mother, right? Of course. Yeah, you're not the PhD to them. Um, yeah, in my practice, the one, one person that's been a very a large challenge for, for myself but recently is finally turning the corner. Sure. Um, she had Lyme disease and then she had mold illness okay. and just chronic fatigue. Sure. And then got COVID. And just couldn't seem to get better. So sure. um, worked on all the different pathways, detoxed her. And okay. I finally had to use IV exosomes, which are um, from the baby's amniotic fluid or from cord blood. Sure. Um, she signed a waiver because it's F it's an FDA cleared lab, but it's not a typically an FDA approved um, procedure that you do in the States and other state in the sure. other countries it is. But long story short, it finally, after doing this, it finally made her turn the corner. So she has her life back, but this girl is 25 years old, couldn't get out of bed, could barely even lift her head. She developed like a dystonia wow. and all these problems with her, her with her cervical spine. Wow. Um, but the exosomes really gave her her life back. So that was like a new and exciting, um, you know, plus for us, for our office. That's a, a big deal. And I appreciate that you reach into like even the farthest toolkits because a lot of times people need a solution that's coming out of a treasure chest that typically is not used. Right. And sometimes you really have to reach in there and say, look, we've tried everything, yes. but I really am invested in you winning at this and turning the corner, like you said. So that's really cool. Cause I've heard great things about it. Um, I've not tried it yet, Oh yeah, but I've heard great things. I mean, it's regenerative for sure. Um, I did it for myself after COVID because I was just like half dead after COVID. You know, it turned sure. out I had mold at the home too, but I didn't know that. Sure. Um, and then I started doing it every quarter and 
I look forward to it because every time I do that IV, it's like I get my brain back. You know, like I feel like I sleep better. My inflammation's gone. I'll do an IV. I'll get out of the chair and my little like low grade back pain that I have from sitting all day, because that's what we do at the office, right? (laughs) It's just gone. So it it is nice. Like to have that in my toolkit now. That's awesome. And I think so many people are studying, you know, biohacking, longevity, all the different things they can do. And sometimes we're chasing our tail. Like we're we're taking the supplements, we're doing the things. So I love researching and understanding tools like this where you're just giving the body everything it needs to regenerate itself. Right. That's so true because like exosomes are messenger RNA. You're not getting any DNA. So it's just a reboot for our cells to start talking to each other like they should again. And everything, honestly, I think is coming down to the cell membrane. Don't you think in health, it seems like if the cell membrane is compromised because they don't have enough essential fatty acids or they have some sort of toxin or they have some sort of deficiency, the cells can't communicate and you're going to be inflamed. True. True. And also our body over time, I just spoke at a conference on uh, longevity and I had to pull all this science on curcumin for longevity. And it showed if you are not actively battling aging, it is quite a downhill process. (laughs) I I underestimated it. I was like, oh, I'll just age later. Like after 80, after 90, I'll, I'll deal with aging. It didn't occur to me that it's such a slow decline. You almost have to get in there right at like 40 and start holding yourself up. Otherwise. Absolutely. And that, that speaks about volumes, what you're saying. And women, especially with our hormones, um, you know, they change in our thirties and now I'm seeing some women in their twenties are becoming perimenopausal. Um, yeah, it's, it's awful because I do a lot of blood work. And so I do a lot of hormones on everybody. And at these endocrine disruptors, you know, thank God you're a great mother for what you've done for your children. Someday they'll appreciate it. Yeah, someday. (laughs) But, um, most people are not optimizing their children like that. And, um, there's a lot of endocrine disruption, but I noticed in my thirties, my hormones were changing and I just recently was thrust into menopause. Now I'm 50, but I had to have my ovaries removed. Even though my periods were normal, I had a huge ovarian mass that I wouldn't have found had I not done one of my functional medicine tests. I did a test um, for um, high-risk genetics for cancer because my father's adopted. So I just didn't know my genes on that side of the family. Sure. I showed these high-risk cancer genes for ovarian and breast cancer. Mm -hmm. I did an ultrasound I didn't think I needed. My only symptom was, uh, sometimes I'm bloated, but who isn't, right? Sure. And then, you know, I had to go to the back. I had to urinate a lot, but I drank so much water, right? Right. (laughs) So when I did the ultrasound, they found this grapefruit size mass mass on me. Was Um, it a fibroid? It wasn't. It was an ovarian cyst, and they weren't sure if it was cancer or not. Sure. So at first I thought, I'm going to shrink this naturally. (laughs) Because I had a fibroid. I called it a dragon's egg. Mm -hmm. It was 10 centimeters. And I was so shocked, but I had the same symptoms. And I couldn't, I finally discovered what the problem was. And then I thought I'd shrink it. And so I tried everything, right. but I didn't win. So no. <laughs> when it's that big, mine was like 9.5 centimeters. Yeah. It's pretty hard to do. Yeah. But um, with the genetic portion, it was like a 65% increased risk of ovarian cancer. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to play with this. Yeah. So even though I'm holistic and I try everything I can to be natural, I did remove my ovaries. Sure. <laughs> so, and then I just made sure my, my hormones were optimized. But it's interesting. I've been doing hormone replacement for patients for over 20 years, but when it's you, yeah. it is way more difficult. So now I have this newfound gratitude and yeah. um, uh, reverence for these women that I've, I've been trying to optimize. It's not easy. No, you know, definitely not easy. It's-, it's not easy. And I find sometimes you have to go through it. Mm-hmm. Like for the last 10 years, women have said to me, menopause is difficult. Do you have anything for menopause? And I hadn't gone through it. So I, I had no idea. Now that I'm at perimenopause, I'm like, oh, wow, we need some tools. <laughs> and so now I'm building teas and herbs and supplements because I'm like, we cannot suffer like this. This is not fair that all of a sudden your body shifts and it's not listening to you the way it always did. It's crazy. And yeah. then they think, oh, you're depressed. Sure. Let me give you some Prozac or Paxil or Lexapro. Yeah. No, you need progesterone or you need some estrogen right. or or maybe some adrenal support, right? Correct. Um, so I do you feel Feel like women were called emotional. We do have more emotions, right? Sure. But as things change, I hate that we're being labeled yeah. as crazy. Totally. You know? Or just even forgetful. Well, we're forgetful because our hormones aren't optimized, right? Correct. So when it comes to women's health issues like PCOS, perimenopause, menopause, do you see like a lot of struggle when people come to you? And then how do you address it with them? Because it's it's a big topic right now. And I really appreciate that Women are finally speaking up. It's coming to the forefront. It's being spoken about. 
as women in women's health, we're never studied at the same level as men. So we don't have the same drugs or, or specific prescriptions for us. Like I, I've, I, I once post-op took a drug and fainted because mm. they completely underestimated that I am a five foot tall Indian woman. I'm not a six foot tall white man. Like there's a differential here in right. how, and I had explained to my surgeon, I said, I never ever take a painkiller, not even a Tylenol or Advil. I'm telling you go light. And he just gave me the full dose. And then it, it had that adverse effect. So how uh, do you see women's health in your practice? Um, so I see a lot of women, probably 70%, maybe even 80% women in my practice. And that is something I do on everyone is hormones, no matter what age you are, even teenagers, sure. because it does affect acne. And I'm seeing a lot of PCOS. Okay. So the polycystic ovarian syndrome, definitely there's some gut issues involved. People have a lot of... Um, big glucuronidase issues. They have got issues with glucuronidation and they don't seem to, they have a lot of insulin resistance. And I think it's the food. I think it's the glyphosate. I'm allowed to say that um, because there's some studies on that. Sure. And of course, just the high fructose corn syrup. So these GMO foods are spiking insulin. They're finding that even COVID did something to the pancreas. We're seeing a lot more insulin resistance after COVID. Wow. So whatever the cause, we're seeing a lot more PCOS. It's definitely linked with insulin resistance. I use a lot of berberine, okay. myo-inositol, mm-hmm. VTEX. I love Chase Tree Berry for that as well. Sure. Um, put them on a low-carb diet and exercise program. Um, get them off dairy because the hormones, you know, are even if it's organic, raw milk, there's still hormone disruption from the dairy. Sure. Um, and off like simple white white bread, pasta, cereal, sugar, things like that. But that's how I address PCOS, sure. um, menopause. I will use herbs. I like homeopathy, actually. That does seem to help. Okay. Um, and then I'll use hormones if I need to, of course. And in my case, I absolutely needed it. Sure. <laughs> I tried to do I tried to do the creams when I first had the ovaries moved, and they were not strong enough. So then I, I went sure. to pellets, which typically I don't recommend to patients because sure. once they're in, you can't get them out. And if you are sensitive like you are... right. I know you can have a nasty side effect, yeah. but I, I had um, my practitioner underdose me. And okay. this way, if I needed more, she could either stick another pellet in or I could use cream. Nice. Now those pellets have worn off. I'm back on creams and I'm fine. But the creams right after the surgery were not strong enough for me. Got it. <laughs> that is for sure. So that's how I treat the menopause and then the... Um, the PCOS. Perimenopause is a little difficult because your ovaries and your pituitary are still working. Sure. You know, so you're still getting the signal. You're just not perhaps making as much uh, progesterone as you need. Right. So that's where herbs are very important and homeopathy is very important for that. Sure. So have you seen that, you know, when it comes to the patients who are coming in, oftentimes they're coming in with knowledge. They have an understanding of their bodies. They've been trying different things, but it, they almost have these misconceptions about their health. They're assuming, I just need to lose five or 10 pounds. When in fact, when you start to do those testing protocols, you start to see, hey, you're actually postmenopausal in your progesterone. We need to bring you back up or, or your gut is really dysbiotic. You really need a gut microbiome reboot. So what are some misconceptions about women's health that you see out there? Um, well, definitely everyone's focused on weight loss and yeah. they're not looking at the root cause of why they're gaining the weight, right? They just want the, the skinny fix. shot. I know. <laughs> how, um, All my <laughs> friends are asking me, hey, can I just take Ozempic? And right. I'm like, guys, we can all do anything we want. I get it. I understand that desire. But what happens when you stop taking it? And there's more to it than that, right? Yeah. You know, and what I, about the side effects? Like, I don't tolerate side effects. I can't just experiment with these things. <laughs> well, I love the peptide, semaglutide, I have to say. Sure. But in our clinic, when we prescribe that, we do a gut cleanse first. We nice. put everyone on a 28-day detox of anti-inflammatory foods. And the most common inflammatory foods are sugar, yes. um, gluten, dairy, soy, and corn. So Correct. we take people off that. Um, and then I'll put them on acromancia. So that's a probiotic that actually increases your own GLP-1. And I'll, in, in, I'll add intermittent fasting and I'll look at their hormones. So after we do all those things, then I'll prescribe the semaglutide or terzepatide or something like that. Sure. But the way to get around the side effects mm-hmm. is not to just put them on that peptide without cleaning out their gut. Because if you do, they're going to have heartburn or indigestion sure. or constipation. You've got to prime the body, right? right? But some of the misconceptions, <clears throat> people will think their chronic fatigue is hormones. You know, And it's not just hormones. And I love hormones. Yeah. But it's never just hormones. So like, mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing I see for women. They come in, they don't want to do the work. 
Yeah. And I will lose them as a patient because they're like, she didn't want to just give me hormones. She wanted to do this huge workup and clean up my gut and put me on a diet. So they'll go to my friend who I love, who's, who owns a medical spa, okay. and she'll just put them on hormones without any of the work. And then a lot of times, three, four months later, they will come back and say, oh, they gave me a migraine or I lost my hair or I got acne or I got chin hair or something like that. Sure. So that's the biggest thing I see. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's no shortcuts, right? And that's the challenge is in this day and age, we want a magic pill and we want a formula. I even say that sometimes I'm like, just give me the formula. Just tell me the way to get there. And then I laugh at myself because I know there's no way around it. You have to go through. And with modern day times being the way it is with the food, the water, the air quality, the stresses, the EMFs that you mentioned, all of it's stacking up against us and inflaming us. So I always educate people on we must reduce our inflammation actively, which means we must take the supplements and the different tools in our toolkit. So are you seeing that people are coming in now and are more amenable because the pandemic happened and now they're worried about their futures? Or are you still seeing this mindset of like, just give me the quick fix? It, it's a mix, but COVID definitely made people more aware of their immune systems. Sure. You know, people are now coming in for immune boosters and Good. IVs and vitamin C and they're concerned that they're on the right probiotic, you know, so sure. they're a little more advanced in their thinking. So I have nice. to say it did expand our, our office. We actually opened up our second office right when COVID hit and I was like, Oh no, you know, is this going to be bad for business? But it was actually, unfortunately, unfortunately it was good for business because sure. people actually wanted to care about their health so I'm seeing more um, educated people now on, and that want this kind of medicine sure. that are not looking for as much of a quick fix, quick fix as compared to the past when I opened up in like 2015. That was more cookie cutter. Sure. Like, I just want the formula. Just right. give me the shot. Tell me what to do. I don't want to change anything in my house. Sure. And now they're more open because they've kind of opened right. their they've eyes. They've been through it. Yeah. Yeah. So in, it sounds like in your practice, you have some really fun toys and tools. Toys is probably the wrong word. But to me, for someone who loves biohacking, longevity, health, um, and I always laugh at the word biohacking, but I consider Ayurveda the original biohacking toolkit. Absolutely. Like yeah. it's, how are we going to get to our health goals using the best of what's out there? Um, so within your practice, what are some fun things that you have? And then what are some emerging trends or research that you see in functional medicine that you're excited about? So some really fun things I have are peptides. So I got into that with A4M in 2018. Awesome. And people say, you know, peptides, isn't the FDA regulating them and outlawing them? Some of them, yes. But insulin is a peptide. All a peptide is, uh, is just a bunch of amino acids put together with a bond and it tells your body to do something. So it sends a signal. So like uh, growth hormones, a peptide. Um, HCG, what is a peptide? They banned that because of what people did with that. You know? sure. But so the peptides I use modulate the immune system and you can take them in oral form. You don't have to take them in pill, but that's like one of my fun toys when people come in, especially with autoimmune disease. I can't believe I didn't mention autoimmune. Autoimmune sure. is on the rise. Like, oh, big you, time. I'm sure you're seeing that as well. And again, it comes back to the allostatic load of all these toxins we're seeing that we just can't handle and the food, of course. But, um, one of my favorite things in, in my cap is probably the thymulin peptide and thymogen alpha, which is an oral peptide to modulate the immune system. Okay. Um, of course, the weight loss peptides that we talked about. I, sure. I do love those for people that are stuck. And, you know, they, they are great for PCOS, I have to say. Nice. And, of course, for diabetes. But when you have a difficult PCOS case and fertility, you put them on that just short term, sure. give them the tools how to maintain the weight loss and to how to keep their GLP up, up naturally. Um, so that's a fun little thing. And, of course, the exosomes that we've been talking about, that is like the next step of anti-aging. I think that's where a lot of the research needs to be done. Sure. Uh, stem cells, regenerative medicine, exosomes. But the exosomes are actually showing in a little bit of research that has been done mm -hmm. to be more powerful than the stem cells because the stem cells are a, qu a short, quick fix You know, sure. when you get those. Mm -hmm. The exosomes, again, because you're using your own body cells and it's just a reboot, sure. it's lasting three to six months, the results of that. So that's something that's like, I think the future of medicine, you know, sure. people don't have to have the back surgeries that they used to have. They right. don't have to have the joint replacement re replacement. And if you don't want to do it from a baby's umbilical cord or a baby's um, amniotic sac, yeah. you can do it from your own. They're finding right. the exosomes from your own blood. Um, this, there's a great company that we're using right now that does this. 
they work just as well as the babies so far in the wow. studies that they're doing. They're seeing that lowers the cytokines and the inflammation just as much as the baby's stem cell or the baby's exosomes. Nice. So I think that's really exciting and it's nice that you don't have to de- you don't have to depend on a mother to donate this little baby's uh, you know her her cord amniotic blood. fluid and cord blood yeah right, right. It, it's just your own blood that they're getting it from and it just takes, takes a couple of weeks to get it back from the lab sure so. So let's dive into peptides for a moment because I had um, Nat Nidham on my podcast and she talks a lot about peptides. I just attended A4M Mm. and it sounds like it's something that just people have not heard of, but it sounds like that next step after you've tried a lot of other tools in the toolkit and you haven't won at your health. So let's talk about autoimmune and peptides for just one moment. I'm seeing that rheumatology is exploding. Patients are calling all day. They're getting booked into rheumatology. It's up tremendously from what I see since the pandemic. Correct. And I'm seeing a lot of women around me say, oh my gosh, I have Sjogren's. Oh my God, I have this. And once you've got one autoimmune disease, you're in line for a stack up. And unfortunately, the toolkit that most of rheumatology is offering from what I see is not wonderful. They're biologics, yeah. So they shut the immune system down, which you and I are trying to modulate the immune system. So the peptides that modulate the immune system are thymosin alpha, uh, thymosin beta, even GHKCU, which was originally a cosmetic peptide um, used for skin, but that actually has immune modulating properties that turns off the bad genes. So it helps you epigenetically turn on your good genes. Wow. So it's pretty cool. And they're even using it for cancer now. Epitillon is another one. So those are things I'll use in my autoimmune cases. Um, KPV is another one. I like that. That works on um, alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, which is suppressed in autoimmune and different Um, like mold cases and such. But a lot of these now, the shots might be going away, but you can still get them in oral form. The FDA is allowing us still to do it in a nutraceutical. Okay. So there's lozenges that you can put under your tongue. There's creams you can put on your face. um, And there's oral pills you can take now. Okay. And when it comes to the, the group of people that's being affected by autoimmune conditions now, how do you guide them? How do you work with them? What are you seeing in your practices working best? Oh, cleaning up their gut, definitely. And I have to say this again, mold. Whenever I see the nuclear speckled pattern of the autoimmune ANA on the blood test, I always think, look for mold. And I want to say nine times out of 10, maybe even more, like 95% of the time, you're going to find it. Now, it depends on the company that you're hiring to check your house. Sure. Because it's just like physicians, they're all trained differently and they may not be looking for the same thing. So if you have one mold company come out and say, oh, it's just the normal amount of mold, well... (laughs) That normal amount of mold may be normal for like a, a gentleman that's 25 years old and six foot tall and healthy, sure. but not for a 65 year old grandmother who's you know, frail and 90 in, you know, and elderly and her immune system's not working the same way. So sure. normal, what's normal? Right. So do you have certain companies locally who you like? Yes. Yes. Awesome. I have a few that I like. I mean, am I allowed to say them or? Um, I mean, I think if someone comes to you, they'll get yeah. that. But it's, I think it's so great when you have a practitioner like you who's like, look, this is who you can go to. This is who can support you. It's so important to have those resources. Absolutely. Because otherwise, they're, like you said, there's such variability. Right. Yeah, and so, I've had many that have come to my house and they didn't find any. And I'm, I know there's mold there. I know because I sure. feel it. You can smell it. Or you can. You, I get rashes. I get hives when I have mold. I'll lose my hair. And so finally I found a more recent company that found it after five companies have been to my house. Wow. Found it in my master bath- bathroom. And what stinks is you ha- I had to take the tile out. So there was no obvious signs, but right. he just found moisture in the walls, which you think, oh, well, people shower in there. There's going to be moisture in the walls. Sure. Black mold, I mean, the toxic stachybacterus, the kind that is a zero tolerance mold in my um, guest bathroom for God knows how long, (laughs) making me sick. You know, in 2020, I'll never forget, there was a leak in the bathroom and my child pointed it out and there was a line in the wall and I was like, okay, we'll just tell them to paint over it. And my handyman's like, you don't just paint over it, Shivani, we need to know what's happening. I said, fine. He said, make, let me make a hole. I said, go ahead and make the hole. He makes a hole. He goes, Shivani, I'd like to make a hole the size of my head. Is that Okay. I said, sure, whatever you want to do. So he makes this hole, a big square hole, and then he takes a video and he texts it to me. And I will never forget from first story looking up into the second story, it was a wall of green slime mold. And my first thought was, we're going to die. We're going (laughs) to die. That's it. I have failed as a mother. I can't believe that just happened. How do I protect these humans? I guess we have to move. Like that was my first reaction. Were you having any symptoms? No symptoms. Okay. So symptoms are vague, you know, fatigue, shortness of breath, 
hair loss, rashes, weight gain or weight loss, unexplained, migraines, nasal allergies, like, a, you know, just like chronic sinus issues, insomnia, uh, brain fog. I think Nothing sometimes like I work so hard at my health. I can mask anything because I'm, I'm maintaining health as if it's my full-time Smart, job. Smart, yes. But I think it's always worth it to go get tested for mold within your body and for the house. And so you're I'm inspiring still, me. I'm still so impressed though <laughs> that you had that much mold in the house yeah. and nobody was sick. Yeah, so I immediately... Um, sectioned off that side of the home with plastic. We never went in there again. I had it remedied. They had to rip out a bathroom and do all the stuff they did and remediate. Um, But I kept my children very far away from all of it because I I knew. I mean, it's less than one micron thick. So smaller than... It's like the size of COVID. It's a tiny, tiny... These are um, the um, the spores, spores. yeah. Uh, But they're so small, they can penetrate walls. So people think, well, it's just the other room. You know, it's... I've got plastic and all that stuff, but it's, it's you still, it's not ear proof, you know, it's still yeah. going through those mycotoxins. Yeah. So um, I'm so, you're very blessed and it must be your herbs that you have the regimen, <laughs> the family on, but um, yeah. that's really impressive. Yeah. So when people do have mold, how long does it take to clear it? It depends on their system. That's a great okay. question. So if they're optimized, you know, just a few months, um, okay. six months is the typical protocol. I use Andrew Campbell's protocol and it seems to be six months, but I'm clearing people in three months. The biggest most difficult uh, obstacle that I have with mold is getting them out of the house sure. and making sure they got all the mold because it's not just the air. Then it's going to be the tapestries, the carpet, oh, the God. books, things like that. They say even you have to treat your house sometimes like a fire sale because it's in even the computers, like it's in the vents, it's in uh, the HVAC system. So there's so many things you have to look at sure. instead of just cleaning the one area. Right. Got it. But um, you can get rid of it three to six months. Okay. Got it. And then on this journey of practicing functional medicine, how has it affected your health and your lifestyle? Oh, well, you know, it is a journey, right? We have our ups and downs. It seems like the more conferences I go to, and I am kind of a nerd, I'm always going to conferences at least once a month. Um, The more I go, the more I learn, the more tests I do, and the more I find things. And so that is uh, difficult for me because then I'm like, oh, now I've got this to worry about. But you know, I, I'll get better. So here I am 50 and my blood work is better than it was in my forties. Awesome. Um, so I'm optimizing myself, but constantly there's something new I'm finding. Okay. Now my thyroid's not working like it used to, or now my hair is falling out. I'm dealing with that with the hormones. Sure. Um, now my sleep's not as good. So it is constantly a journey. And that's one thing people come in and they're like, okay, fix me in three months. Well, I wish I'm not God. I cannot do that. It would be lovely. I can help clean you up best I can. And and then a lot of the work is done by the patient. They have to follow the diet and check their environment and such. Um, But it's just, it's constantly a struggle. We have to constantly be on it. Just like you said with your kids, you know, you have to be on them. Sure. So when it comes to your practice, what is one of the favorite things or patient examples that you have that you remember as like, you know, I am just on this track and it's so joyful because these are the types of patients and these are the types of moments I get to have. Like my favorite patient to treat kind of thing. I'd say gut patients, you know, they come in with Crohn's or colitis or reflux and I love treating that because I know I can definitely change their microbiome. Um, What they say in the research, I think it takes three days to change the environment of their gut. Three days by just changing your diet. That's amazing. You know? Yes, that's pretty cool. So that's a favorite. Um, and then, of course, I love the patients that just want to come in for longevity because they're willing to do anything, anything. right? Yeah. And they're already pretty <laughs> optimized and yeah. they have such a great mindset, which is a huge, we didn't really talk about that, but that's a sure. huge part of healing. You have to be positive. You know, you have to have that spiritual sure. mindset like, yes, I can do this and I can get over this hurdle. Um, but so, yeah, I love those longevity patients. And I love treating autoimmune because they do respond right. to to cleaning them up and, and detox. They really respond well. You see those numbers move. Cool. So if you had a, um, like a, a way to look 20 years, 30 years into the future and you could design it yourself, because if I look 20, 30 years into the future, I'm quite worried about humanity and oh, how things are going. Definitely. But if on a positive note, because I just wanted to ask you like one fun last question before we wrap up, um, what would your ideal world be like? 
Oh, everything would be pure. You know, like in Italy, they banned all the artificial flavors and colors and, and, and synthetics in food. I wish they would do that in the States. So I'd too. pure water, yeah. pure food. Everyone would have a garden. Um, all the houses would be green. Yes. There'd be no emissions with our cars, sure. you know, no pollutants. And I would love our health care to be based on prevention instead of treating the disease that already occurred. Let's prevent it. That would be my, my, my most incredible dream for this country and the world in general. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. You thought of some things in there that I, even I didn't think of. Like, of course, green cars, clean yeah. home and those different aspects. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, it's been a lovely, lovely time connecting with you today and highlighting your practice because I've heard wonderful things about it. I have multiple patients of yours who are my friends who are like, oh, you haven't been to Tringali? <laughs> I'm like, no, not yet, but I will. Well, I'm so flattered and honored. And I, you know, it, it's since I was little and I was sick, it was just a dream to help people. And that's what I'm on this planet for. God gave me this gift to help people. And we have two locations, Palm Beach Gardens and West Palm Beach. Um, we're expanding soon. So there's lots of good things in the future are coming with awesome. the Tringali Vibrant Health. Nice. And will you share where they can find you? Oh, sure. Definitely. So um, you can give us a call at 561-283-1166. You can check out our website at Tringali. That's T-R-I-N-G-A-L-I dash health, H-E-A-L-T-H dot -E com. Awesome. And we're located on in um, Prosperity Drive in Palm Beach Gardens and in Avernia, or I'm sorry, on Olive in West Palm Beach, Olive and Avernia, downtown West Palm. Perfect. Well, so, so lovely to have you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And again, such an honor, Dr. Yeah. Gupta. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for this episode. Check out our sponsor, Fusionary Formulas, the potent turmeric supplement used by doctors around the U.S. for patients with pain and inflammation. www.fusionaryformulas.com. I'm your host, Dr. Shivani Gupta. For more, visit shivanigupta.com. Subscribe to this podcast in Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Click the follow button or subscribe in any of the apps that you use. That's all I've got for you on the Fusionary Health Podcast this week. You have the power to transform your health and achieve vibrant health starting today.